I wanted to make a video to appreciate this beautiful API that is built in in the browser and that's called Fetch API. You probably uh, are familiar with this beautiful API. It's the replacement for the old XML HTTP request uh, API. But uh, let's go ahead and just examine the beauty of this API. So this API is used to make request HTTP request to a remote resource and retrieve the content of that resource. Although the name is indicates that you're kind of fetching something you're pulling something yeah you can actually do more than just fetching you can actually essentially post and, and, and put values in a resource right so that that might be my only criticism of the api the naming of it but there are everything else the api the interfaces the input parameter the output the way it's structured to be two calls is so brilliant let's go ahead and ju just uh, query something right let's say i have um, i'm going to declare a result i'm going to fetch the content of this website which is http was it example.com https right so just so course don't yell at us uh, if i do this now and we have to do a wait the beauty of this is that like you can do a wait in the console. I just love it. And now if we get R, this result, if we print this thing, it's a response type. So technically it was packaged for me to get the headers and the status code. And pretty much it. You might say, saying, where's the content? Where's the beautiful HTML page that you actually fetched, right? Because you, you did a get request, right? That's the default. Where's the content? Well, it's in a body, but the body is a stream, which means that it is so expensive for the API to actually parse that content body for you and give it to you in form of string because they don't know what you're going to use the body for. Why take the hit to parse the body into a data structure for you to consume? They give you the option. To do that but we'll, we'll come to the body but let's let's just explore the headers the headers are in this thing that is called uh, the headers interface right it's 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 a weird structure right you you can ask for a, a specific value like let's our content length hopefully we have a content length there yeah we have a content length you can ask for a specific header but you can also just uh, loop through the whole thing just like let's convert this a fancy interface to an actual array and it's it's actually an array of arrays so uh it's an array of all the headers if you can notice right all the headers are here but each entry has an array of two values which is the header name and the content right the header name is age the content is the value cache control which is how long this thing is valid and content encoding how is this compressed gzip algorithm sometimes you're going to see br brel i believe that's other algorithm content link and so on so you can loop through this stuff don't ask me why this is not actual json uh beats me i think there is a reason for it those, those guys don't do anything without reason but uh yeah it's it's like this so you can do through the headers and you at this stage you have access to the headers you can pull the headers parsing the headers is so much cheaper than actually parsing the body that came back from the example.com right so now you might say, you might say like, how, how do i get the actual content well you can do uh, the actual result let's say res right and you can do something like that await r the text text will convert the body stream which is again it's just almost like a pointer to the content that we got back but text will effectively convert that array of bytes of the body which we receive from the uh, socket right into an actual string and now you can do something with it right in this case uh, this is the html that we got back that conversion could be expensive and you didn't feel it here because it's it's a very tiny thing but let's raise the bar a little bit here's a large json that i stole from json iterator test data not really stole just 
took it from this uh, github repo i'm gonna reference everything in the comment section uh, below for your convenience and here i'm gonna do what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do the same thing result equal await fetch I'm gonna fetch this thing this is a large file mind this is a very large file so awaiting it will take time to actually pull the content but now the cost i don't know if you noticed there's like the, there was a heartbeat where we got between we when we sent the request and when we got the response but now if i actually got hey i want the actual result how do you convert this json into actual results remember we do not have the json value yet you cannot consume it we got the headers and a read stream so far so most people what they do is like oh, okay Jose, i'm gonna do a wait or the json right and usually you you do with this in a then dot then right and now the browser is responsible for taking that pointer where it has everything in memory it respond it got the response right from the socket from the server but it didn't take the head to actually convert the bytes, the set of body by large body bytes, to actually convert it to an actual JSON that you can work with it. See how long this will take. Did you feel that? That took a long time to actually yeah, do that. And, and I, I only have, how many? This is only 1100, 1100 entries. If you have a million entries in this JSON, then it's gonna be larger and larger. It's gonna take more time to do that conversion, right? That's why reading large files in JSON is is, is, quite, ex, is quite expensive, right? You can do like a, do this thing, that ID, right? Whatever. This is the actual values of things here. Like looks like these are users, right? But part what that's my point. Parsing this thing into value JSON takes time, and you might say, "Hey, I'm reading small things that doesn't matter." Yeah, but what if you're actually reading large things, right? And that takes a long time. You want, you want, you want just the first few values. You don't want to take the head to parse the entire JSON. What do you do in this case? You let's refresh. You use the streaming capabilities of this thing. So let's go ahead and and hit that JSON iterator again. But this time, what I'm going to do is I create. I'm going to create a reader, and I'm going to get the body dog get reader is that how you do it i forgot i think this is how you do it so i'm gonna get ask the body to give me the reader value right and now i have a reader stream and you you notice that it was so fast because technically i don't have i did not do anything yet but now here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna declare a value let v equal await reader dot read i'm gonna read whatever let the uh browser read the first x amount of data and then when i print this thing notice i have how much did we read we read around half a meg or is, that, is that right yes that's half a meg of content if you if you execute that thing again right how do i get this to print immediately right no, notice this right you get another 65,000. Now, I don't know how the browser decides how much it gives you based on its memory or thing, but look at this variable. This is as like done or not. It's like, there's more to read. There is more to read. And if you expand this, this is an actual binary value array. Like this is probably the ASCII code or you know, the ASCII code, the actual binary values, decimal values in this case, that represent the bytes. So you can essentially just work with the first amount of bytes, and if you're satisfied, you can just quit that loop. Reading it this way, reading the response as a stream, is way much more efficient sometimes than converting it, whether to an actual text string, or even worse, JSON, right? JSON, because parsing sometimes can be expensive if you have a huge values. And you might say, I can't really parse JSON. You cannot just read half a JSON. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a problem, I guess, huh? But sometimes if you parse the JSON as a text, like a few, few, the, few, the few bytes in the beginning, you can get enough information from 
uh, your server uh, that will kind of give you a hint to what exactly you want to do. It's just another thing, right? Just, just appreciate this. This two step is so critical that they had added this readable stream. And uh, I don't know, I find it very enticing. And some, 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 some of you might say, how can I convert this U int? Eight array, which is this binary buffer, to an actual value that I can do. You can use something I believe it's called the new text decoder. Then you do decode and you do v of value. You pass it this this thing, and it's gonna convert the value for you. Obviously, if you're looking at just that, that's not a valid JSON, right? But you can search uh, through it through a text, right? text string and uh maybe my json example is not that great but if you're reading a, a huge text file or a csv file that is possible to be streamable unlike json unless we have streamable json in the future uh we're stuck with this json thing unfortunately but yeah i just wanted to make the video to appreciate the value of beautiful beautiful fetch guys just sometimes you need to just read the headers you know without actually taking the hit to parse the body right especially if you have large content these additive like this extra second or half a second can make a huge difference to your front end mm, i just realized this is all this whole video was a front end video mm, well uh actually there is a node.js fetch api isn't it all right but yeah i just want to make this video to discuss this fetch api beauty I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.